Let's go back to the future, shall we? Oh, great Scott. The time, 1985. The place, Beaverton, Oregon. The man, Peter Moore. What was he doing? He was creating the Nike Color High, also known as the Nike Dunk. Oh yeah. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Yes, I am late with this. Why? I don't know. Who cares, man? Better late than never, right? But this is the Nike Dunk High. I have not bought a pair of Dunks in a very long time. You can actually see the last time that I did buy a pair of Dunks by searching our channel because they were on there. Or I'll put in a cute little photo. <laughs> you can do that too. We'll have a little card right there. Wrong side. Oh wait, you mean no, the label? The card. I know, but I consider the picture the card. That's the thumbnail. Okay. That's the card. Okay. Now, these guys are back, and I don't want to say they're better than ever, but, you know, it's close. The Nike Dunk High is a classic. It's actually a staple of Nike basketball, for those of you guys that don't know. There was a brief history lesson right in the beginning, and by brief, I mean very brief, just because I want to just run through it real quick. However, I did want to touch on a few things. The first thing is 1985, Back to the Future released. One of the greatest trilogies of all time. 1985 was a great year. Is the year you were born? Yeah. <laughs> I like to consider 1983 a great year, but it might not have been. All I know is that the Nike Dunk High, like I was saying before, is kind of a Nike staple as far as Nike basketball. Right now it's considered a staple within Nike SB or Nike skateboarding, which is pretty uh, accurate, I'd say, just because it was even a staple of skateboarding way back in the 80s alongside the Air Jordan 1. One of the cool things about the Nike Dunk, though, is that the designer of the Air Jordan 1, Peter Moore, also designed these. Now, some people consider this to be a poor man's version of this. That actually wasn't the case originally. But these were actually originally intended to be a more slimmed down version of a shoe from Nike Basketball that was very popular at the time, uh, released a little bit earlier. It was called the Air Force One. Now, one of the biggest differences between something like this, the Air Jordan 1, and the Nike Air Force One is one thing. Can you guess what that is? The midsole? Close. It's actually the Air. It's not in here. Oh. That's why there's no Nike Air tag on the tongue, just a Nike tag. So for those of you guys that aren't aware, Nike is very slick with their branding. So the branding is also the marketing or the advertising for what's inside the product. Air Jordan means that there's air in the Jordans. What kind of air? At this point, it really doesn't matter because it's been a mix between regular air and zoom air. But then when you're talking about something like the Air Force One, clearly that is. And that's why the Air Force One React is still the Air Force One because it has air in the back. And even though this shoe released slightly after the Air Jordan 1, again, it's not really the uh, poor man's version of the shoe. The Air Jordan 1 was the first one to bring color to the game, but this guy right here was the one that really brought color to the game. There was multiple colorways. A lot of people consider this the Wu-Tang Dunks. There was one of those, you know, at one time, I think it was like 2009 or something like that. I can't remember the actual year. And it was just like this, had a little Wu-Tang logo on the heel. However, this is originally the Iowa Dunk because the campaign behind everything was revolving around the schools, the collegiate teams, because that just got aired on regular TV. So like it reached the masses and it was very, very pivotal for basketball at that point in time because Jordan was, you know, changing things the year before his rookie season in 84, these released in 85 the rest is history. Now, like I said in the intro, the original name for the shoe was supposed to be the Nike College Color High, which is super interesting because of the way that they were originally going to roll the shoe out. However, this shoe coincidentally was releasing right around the same time frame as the 10 year anniversary of the Slam Dunk, which eventually led Nike to change the name of this shoe really quickly to the Nike Dunk High. And I just think that was a really cool move, man. It instantly garnered interest with the shoe, especially after or following something as, as prestigious at the time as the Air Force One and the Air Jordan 1. Also, another fun fact, the original shoe was built on the same last as a very popular model of the 80s, which was the Nike Terminator. Some people at that time, or a lot of people at that time, actually considered that to be the best fitting Nike basketball shoe ever, but this is back in the 80s, so clearly things have changed since then. I do not know if this is built on the same exact last. I honestly, I doubt it, but it's just a cool fun fact or history lesson. So after the name change, they decided to roll out the shoe in multiple different colors all at once. It was called the Be True to Your School campaign and everything like that. It did feature other shoes as well, but most notably these guys right here. Now, as for this release or re-release, these released back in 2020, which I know seems like so far away, but it was actually just a couple weeks ago. Again, I was late in picking up a pair, mostly because it's impossible to get these things on release days, you know what I mean? Like sometimes, especially with a shoe like this, sometimes the shoes go through their waves of hype. Like a Dunk has always been popular since the 80s, right? But they haven't been popular, popular to like sell out in seconds until recently. I don't know what the current 
reason is. All I know is that like when I was a kid, this was the easiest thing to get over an Air Jordan 1. Like even when the Jordan 1 had finally retroed, these were still easier to get than an Air Jordan 1 and they were cheaper. Now there are some similarities between these and the Air Jordan 1, which is obvious. The most notable thing is the traction. And yes, this is the best traction of all time, give or take which model, it doesn't really matter. It's both the same stuff. The cup soles are different, which you can see visually. It's very minor as far as like the differences go. Mainly these have little bumps in the, the you know, the outside uh, lining and everything of the, what could be considered the midsole and the outsole. It's all one piece at this point. And there were some dunk bottoms put on Jordan 1 bottoms after Jordan broke his foot, which I always thought was really cool. So if Nike or Jordan ever decides to release one of these with the bottom of one of these, I think that that would be one hell of a story to tell because they've already done it with the Jordan 2 bottoms. They called them the 1.5s. He wore those also after he broke his foot because they were trying to give him a little bit more cushion, which is funny that they put the, these on there because these don't have the cushion that these do. Also, again, the differences between the two models mainly is the tech. You know what I mean? You got air in here, you got nothing in here. However, I did take out the insole in these guys right here and I just wanted to see like if it felt like a normal cup sole underneath and it doesn't. It actually feels Feels like it's injected with foam. I don't know if that is true or not. All I know is that that's what it feels like. And if it is true, that was an awesome change. Technically a pro tro. I like it a lot. Even though I wouldn't hoop in these. They're still not that comfortable. It's very basic. Also, there's a very cool YouTuber who's very new to YouTube. His name is OG or Bust. I've been following him on Instagram and he's just an OG Nike guy. And he's got like this version plus the original version. So if you wanted to see comparisons and stuff like that, I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested because you guys already know I sure am. Now, as far as the leather quality is concerned, the yellow portions are super nice. I really like it. Uh, you can just, you can feel it. You can press in it and just instantly wrinkles. You can actually see the the cuts of the leather and everything like that. Something that I also really like is when you pull back the little tab right there, they lined it with a nylon material like they would the interior of the shoe so it doesn't get all frayed and chewed up and everything. And then the black portions are leather. They're not as nice as the outside, but it's still nice leather. I would say though, just comparing the two, the leather on this is softer. I'm not saying that it's better than this one. I'm just saying it's softer on here than it is on here as far as the black stuff goes. The red stuff is, is a little bit nicer than this or maybe right around the same thing. It just has a different texture to it. Now, as far as fit is concerned, I say go down half a size. I think that dunks fit very big unless you're going with a Nike SB version because the SB versions have slightly padded tongues, at least they used to. I don't know if they do anymore. I think that SBs might have these kind of tongues now. They might be a little puffier than this, but I haven't bought an SB in a while. They also have a lot more padding in the rear than something like this. And they also have different insole as well. Normally the SB insoles come with the Zoom Air insole. And so you're elevated just a titch. Look at this, man. I know some of you guys are like, what the f is that? Look, this is the original Kicks magazine, okay? From 1998. Well, not just that. This, <laughs> this is the first one. The very first one? This is issue one. This was how some shoes, besides on court, this is how some shoes were unveiled, okay? This was my poster that I had over my bed. You know where my mind was at when I was a kid? Naughty me. But uh, Sneaker History just had a really great episode of their podcast featuring Russ Bankston. Russ Bankston is a legend. Um, I know that he doesn't think so, but I think so. And he actually wrote a ton of what's in here. I've read his stuff since I was in high school and stuff. And so I, I owe him a lot of what I know. And also just to point out, what's on the ice day of those Jordan 11s? Oh, the lettering that yeah. are on the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So original feature that was scrapped, History Lesson 101. But anyways, what I really wanted to point out was this, because at the time this was the first of its kind. So people that were fans of stuff like this back when we were in school, this is kind of how you knew about it. The only way, because the internet was brand new. The most that you would do on the internet is go into chat rooms. ASL? Yes, age, sex, location. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing it to the iPhone. <laughs> Up close and personal. Close. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Yes, I did. This is really awesome right here. This, the Nike Blazer, is Nike's first basketball shoe. 1973, isn't that cool? And then look at how much they've grown since then. This is just reaching into the 80s. And right here you can see the Air Jordan 1, the Air Jordan 1 Low, the Terminator, which is the last that they used to build the Nike Dunk off of, which is awesome. And you can go all the way up there. You see the Air Force One, that's a classic. And also what's that guy right there? The Airship overlooked until just recently. And then if you wanted to go through, cause I know that I've done this before with like old East Bay magazines, but this is dope, dude. Look at that right there is a relic and it's coming back this year. Just like this. Finally, man, I cannot believe it. And I cannot wait. But yeah, look at all this stuff, man. This stuff is so dope. I just, I might be getting a stiffy right now, but uh, yeah, man, look at all this stuff. The air goat. LWP, you know what that is? That's the first shoe with Zoom Air. Mm. Yeah, first basketball shoe, I should say. Uh, first basketball shoe, I should say. Blah. 
<laughs> the first basketball shoe, I should say, and back then it was called Tensile Air. Ooh. That's my first uh, Jordan right there, gifted to me by my brother. You can have that little cool, you know, thumbnail somewhere up there or whatever. Also, there you go again. Look at that. Letters down the side. Oh my God, what's that sexy thing? That's the Air Penny One. And then here's some other stuff. I just wanted to roll through. Look at this, man. Look at this. Also, keep checking, keep checking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. A little more. Woo! Release those, Nike. What's wrong with you? A little more. Oh my God. How much more do we got? Come on, Chris. Oh, man. This is how we found out about shoes back in the day. The kicks on court section. The Tim Duncans, the Tim Hardaways, the T-Bugs, the Pippin 2s. Look at the price. 120 man. And then look at all these, dude. I wanted every single one of these. Every single one. I want these to come back too. This had zoom in the front, max air in the back. God, those are sexy. Oh God. Yep, it happened. I should have worn my white pants. This right here, this is what I painted my original pair of these two because the original pair had the white panel back here and I wanted mine to look like Eddie Jones. So I used, uh, at, at the time it was model paint, which was not what you want to use because then it started cracking So I had to walk around with a sharpie in my pocket so I could fill in the cracks during my classes at school Yes, I spent my school days not learning a damn thing. You got Vin Baker's Pro Strongs. Man, I, I wanted these so bad, dude And then check this out. We still go and yes, I just skipped over to the fun police. We could talk about that later. Oh Look at this man right here. It's got hair and everything this guy is Eric Avar, a young Eric Avar, and yes, he designed some of the best shoes in Nike's catalog. I mean, I'm not even playing, man. If you can go on eBay right now and find this magazine, I highly recommend it. You can go learn some things. This is not Avar, this is now going into Tinker. But yeah, now you guys know exactly what she goes through on a daily <laughs> basis. Which leads me to, I had a couple things that I was gonna say, mm -hmm. but now that we did all of that, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. <clears throat> but these showing up at our house made me kind of <laughs> miss the days when I was back in high school and I couldn't tell you the difference between a Jordan 1, a Dunk, or an Air Force 1. It was just a shoe with a swoosh on the side. And instead I was like, mm, that's that, you that's know, that. You know what, this man? This is the differences. You're not the only one. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about other females or other women. I'm talking about just people. Yeah. You know, like people that weren't totally into sneakers or in the know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people were looking at, like a lot of people looked at these and were like, what's the difference? Yeah. I don't get it. You know what I mean? There's a Wings logo. Ooh. I don't even think I knew what a Jordan 1 was in high school. I knew what an Air Force 1 was because of Nelly. Yeah, and everybody did. That was 2002 of, though. I was in high school in 2002. Or 2003. I was in high school then still. All of those shoes were just an Air Force 1 to me. That song was on the radio a lot though. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. I hope that when you watched this video, you actually learned something about the shoe, its history, how it fits, you know, actual information that you might need when you're talking. I didn't point and tell you where the colors are because you can see this, okay? I'm sorry, Stevie Wonder. The video is not for you, man. Listen to the podcast, coming soon. That was one of the most awkward winks I've ever done. I didn't commit to the wink. <laughs> yeah, it's basically how my face looked after I got popped with Novocaine. And with that being said. Thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate you guys. Make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button because that helps us out. If you want us to get to a million subs, it's only you that can make that happen. Thank you once again. Until next time, guys, have a good one. Probably just made a hell of people feel uncomfortable. They were like, oh God. Everybody. My wing just winked at me, I think. It was either a wink or he got something in his eye. It was like a twitch. You know, it looked like Will Smith when he's talking to a... In Hitch? No, 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 no. Oh, also. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about when he was trying to teach Ashley how to be crazy. Mm. You know what I mean? When people f***ing with you and it's like, you know, that's what I look like. <laughs>